the S1 arrived at our house in like four days, which is crazy fast. It was super easy to set up, just like everyone out there says. So why did we get rid of it? Here's why. Hey, if you're new to the channel, let me introduce myself. My name is Brett and this is my laser garage. Now, it wasn't always a laser garage. It actually started out as a woodworking garage. But about three years ago, my wife and I started getting into laser engraving. And last year, she started a full-time laser engraving business. So now I help her out and make laser and CNC content for you. Now, I started out in the diode laser world when I purchased the original X-Tool D1 10 watt machine. I was really a big fan of it and it was responsible for sparking my interest in lasers. I've got a special place in my heart for diode lasers, even though I have other more industrial machines now. I really think that diode lasers are a good starting place to get into the industry, especially now with the increase in technology behind them. So when I caught wind of the X-Tool S1 coming, I wanted to check it out. I thought it was cool that the laser was enclosed from the factory because I hated wearing safety glasses all the time. And this would also eliminate the need to make an enclosure for the smoke and fume venting. It was light burn compatible, more on that later, and it was powerful. We use a lot of six millimeter MDF for our products and 40 watts of power was going to slice through that nicely. So we had a good problem. We were busy and we needed another laser to keep up with demand. At the time we were running our Monport 80 watt CO2 and a Thunderbolt, but we needed another laser. We didn't have room for another large CO2 machine, and at the time, the bolts were a couple of months out for delivery. So we decided to give the S1 a shot and placed an order during a Black Friday special. The S1 arrived at our house in like four days, which is crazy fast. It was super easy to set up, just like everyone out there says. So why did we get rid of it? Here's why. The 40 watt module with the Smart Air Assist cut through our six millimeter MDF really well. I was very happy with the cutting overall. What got me was the engraving detail. For larger things, it engraved beautifully, but we routinely engrave logos that are about one and a half inches to two inches in diameter and small text around 10 point size. The 40 watt module struggled with this level of detail and understandably so due to its spot size. For example, we weren't able to engrave lowercase i's without the vertical line in the eye and the dot merging together into one vertical line. Same type of issues occurred while we were trying to engrave small text on logos. At the size we were trying to engrave, the spot size was just too big. The 20 watt module may have been better suited for us, but obviously the cutting would have suffered, so I don't know. So probably the biggest issue I had with the S1 was the light burn compatibility. Look, Xtool claims compatibility with light burn and technically they are correct. Light burn does work, sort of. And I'm not even complaining about the features I knew straight up wouldn't work, like the multi-point positioning system, curved engraving, the conveyor feeder or other proprietary accessories. I'm just talking about basic functionality. I was having issues where the laser head would slow down during random parts of an engraving, which would cause weird burn lines all over my projects. No matter what I tried, nothing would help. Based off of everything I've read on the forums, it just seems like the S1 does not play well with light burn at this time. I'm sure that in the future, all of this will get worked out, but I just didn't have time to wait. The laser did work great with Xtool's Creative Space program though, but that opened up some other issues. Overall, XCS is a great program. It runs all of the XTool machines really well. And for beginners, the interface is laid out in a way that I think would be easy to learn. Setting cut or engraving parameters is also a breeze. But as someone accustomed to Lightburn, I found the program to be clunky and annoying at some times. A couple quick examples. To zoom in or out, you had to hold down control while using the mouse wheel. And there's no button to align both vertical and horizontally. You have to do each one separately. So those are just a couple minor nitpicky examples, but I struggled with these and other minor annoyances in comparison to what I'm used to in Lightburn. XCS also requires a bit more computing power than Lightburn does. So I found it to lag quite a bit on my system when using it for design work. Things like the union tool were slow to respond. So I found myself going back to Lightburn to do my design work, then importing my design work into XCS, going through my design and using the union tool to group areas together so that it would engrave fast, setting speed and power parameters, and then running the job, which was not really an ideal workflow. But at the time I'm recording this video, XCS 2.0 is currently in public beta testing. And that version has a lot of improvements, I'm sure, but I'm just not familiar with it, so I can't really speak on it. All my experience is with XCS version 1.7. 
The encouraging thing with Xtool is that they are always improving their machines and software, so hopefully this program keeps growing in the right direction. For these main reasons, we just felt that this wasn't the right machine for us. So I posted it for sale on my local Craigslist page in February of 2024. I was overall happy with the machine because I got a chance to try it out and play with it for a few months. And the person I sold it to I think was happy because they got a good deal on a well taken care of laser. I was out some money after the sale, but I was happy that the resale market seems pretty decent for these lasers. If you're interested in purchasing one in the future, I definitely keep an eye on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace for a good deal. Now believe me, I am not making this video to bash Xtool or even the S1 in particular. Not even close to that. Even with these negatives that I'm talking about, I still think it's a solid laser. I could definitely make a video twice as long as this about all the good things it delivers on. The whole point of this video is to explain why it wasn't a good fit for us and our particular business. And in the end, when you're trying to run a business or research a hobby machine, that's all that matters. Each tool that we buy has to be right for each of our individual circumstances. Okay, so if you're considering buying the Xtool S1 and you have similar circumstances or needs to us, I really hope this video was helpful. Leave a comment down below if you agree with me or disagree with me. I would love to hear from you about this. And again, if you found this video helpful, please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more laser and CNC content. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.